Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, I'm working in a new extension and I'm gonna show you how to connect an underfloor heating system to a combi boiler. Right, this is the extension in question. So i have just getting my tools all set up here and I've just piloted through my holes uh, through to the boiler room where the combi boiler is. So this is just gonna be a large kitchen diner extension and I've just drilled those two holes there for my flow and return to the manifold and that is going directly underneath the combi boiler. So first things first, I've got to get my flow and return to the manifold. So. As you can see, uh, a lot of the insulation's already in and the electrician's actually already beating us to it this time. So the main issue I've got is we've got these huge skylights going in and that's gonna affect where I can notch the joist. So because I'm gonna be notching the underside of the joist, I'm only allowed uh, within uh, the first 25% of the span and um, no less than 7% of the span, which I'll explain a little bit more in a minute. So the plan is to notch the underside of here, run it all the way along, and then drop them down where well, there's gonna be a cupboard. So we've also got the consumer unit here. So in an ideal world, I'm just gonna come down by the side of it rather than tight in that corner. So what I'm gonna do is just work out my joist spans, get them marked up, and hopefully we can get our pipes in where we want them. Um, also, the other issue is, because we've got these skylights, we've got different size of joists, so that's going to affect where we can cut as we're running through. So in an ideal world, we want to run nice and straight, so I'll get those marked up and hopefully they will correlate to one another. Okay, so I'm just marking out where I can and cannot drill on the span of these joists. So I've worked out that I can't actually notch um, between the end of the joist here and then the first 7%, which is there, and then I can notch all this area here up to 25%, which is there. So what I've done is I've worked out the same measurement on the shorter joists. So you can see there, I've got my 7% there and my 25% there. So that actually only leaves us this small gap for me to notch through. So I'm just running the laser through, making sure that um, correlates to what I've just marked out on a bigger joist and it's all absolutely fine. So it is within the same section. So you'll have to ignore the other holes that have already been drilled. That's nothing to do with me, but I'll keep mine um, in the right location. So what I'm gonna do is just get all these notched through and then I will clip my pipes literally directly to the underside of the joists. Now you're allowed one eighth or roughly one eighth depth on your notches. So these are 200 mil joists, just about enough for 22 and a clip. So yeah, we're all good to go. Right, I've now got the copper attached to the underside of the joist. Now I have used the black talon clips, but I must admit the hinge on them isn't great. So I'm actually gonna swap those out tomorrow and put some nailed um, clips on there with some insulation underneath. And that'll just get it a little bit deeper. I can't afford to notch any more out because then I will be out of the tolerance here. So this is the main flow and return, like I said, running along. I'm just bent these round here, drop them down on the far left hand side. That's where the uh, connections are on the manifold and then the manifold will be located down there. So for now, because this wall is not actually finished, I will just chuck some lever valves on here uh, once I finish the work up near the boiler. So again, I'll get some nail clips on here, get them a little bit deeper on the notch tolerance that I'm allowed and then that will be fine for the insulation. And then just to avoid the cables here, I've just pulled some bends to get through, um, sleeve the pipe again into the boiler and yeah, let's go inside and take a look while they come out. Okay, so we're up in the bedroom where the boil is located now. And as you can see, that's that new flow and return pipe work that I've installed that will be going into the underfloor heating manifold. Now, I will try to explain to you um, how the manufacturer of the underfloor heating equipment wants this done. So there are several different ways. Some engineers uh, prefer to do things in a different method, but I'll explain to you how the manufacturer wants it done. So at the moment, when you turn your heating on, you just use your wireless room stat. That activates the boiler and it just sends heat straight down the flow pipe. Now, because we've technically got two zones now, we've got our central heating and our underfloor heating, we need to be able to control them independently. So one of the main things you need to do is actually add yourself a zone valve on the flow coming out of the boiler. Now, that will need some changes in your wiring. So you almost need to link it to your wireless room stat to allow it to basically open and close depending on if you're opening or you're calling for demand from your room stat. 
The other thing is we need to put before the zone valve an auto bypass. Now, the reason we need that is to allow the water to circulate um, if the zone valve shuts and the balance valve is uh, shut on the underfloor heating manifold or the underfloor heating manifold isn't circulating because otherwise you're just going to get a water hammer against the zone valves and we need to kind of relieve the boiler of the heat um, using the pump overrun and what will happen is it will just open up a valve here called the auto bypass and that will just circulate the hot water around and around this small circuit here enough to cool the boiler and to uh, stop it from overheating. Now some engineers they like to put something called a close couple T uh, directly underneath the boiler which I'm not against I'm just trying to um, follow the manufacturer's instructions on this one but you can almost separate the systems it's a bit like installing a low loss header so what you do is you install a T on the flow and return right underneath the boiler itself and basically what that allows you to do is almost separate the system, separate the flow rate and if you were installing a new system it allows you to get um, basically a low temperature delta if required but I'm not going to do this on this occasion and um, I'm just going to fit the auto bypass which will work to uh, stop the boiler from overheating so I have got it drained down at the moment or I'm getting it drained down at the moment so once that's all done we can cut into this pipe work and start examining our new pipe layout. Right, the boiler is all up and running now. I've just cracked on with it and I'll just go through the alterations. So, what I've had to do is swing over the filter a little bit just so I can fit in this zone valve here. So, you'll have to excuse the pipe work. It's not my boiler install and I am just trying to alter it for this underfloor heating system. So, again, what I've done is I swung the filter over to the left. That soldering was definitely mine. I have to take blame for that. Um, and I have added an auto bypass. So uh, basically what happens is if there's a restriction in the system, it will flow through this auto bypass, allowing the um, heat to leave the boiler, go back around and uh, prevent the boiler from overheating. So uh, that wasn't on there before, really it should have been, but when you're fitting um, you know, additional zones, you definitely need to have one. Um, also, this here is our new two port, so this is for the central heating only, so this will need to be wired into the current room stat and that will open and close as and when needed. Um, the other alterations really are just, I've teed off here, um, that's for the flow to the underfloor heating and I've teed in here for the return. So I wanted to make sure the uh, return is before the filter so any sludge and debris from the underfloor heating will also go through the filter. Um, again, some engineers will say you need to put a close couple T or low loss header on an underfloor heating system and you know that is correct also but nine times out of 10 this is how underfloor heating systems are plumbed in and it uh, is as per manufacturer's instruction. So, Again, one thing you might be wondering is why isn't there a zone valve on the flow to the underfloor heating? Um, it depends what manifold you've got. So my manifold's actually got an actuator built onto it, so I don't need to have that additional zone valve. But if you didn't have one or you wanted a secondary one, you could just put one on the flow and down to your underfloor heating manifold but to be honest it is just a little bit of waste of time so yeah that's pretty much it like i say it's a little bit of a mess but uh needs must we've got it there in the end boiler's all up and running i just need to get all the air out and then we can move downstairs and i will show you the underfloor heating manifold right we are back downstairs now and i've actually taken off those black talon clips the hinges on them were a bit pant so i have felt and nailed it instead and i'm a lot happier with um, how that's now installed. So what I've also done is I was just going to leave the flow and return from the boiler off on its isolation valves and pump up the manifold manually but because the builder is going to be sliding in some ply I thought I might as well just run the pipework down to the manifold and hopefully they can um, slide it behind with the pipework in place. So because this wall is not finished and the ply is going behind it I have just stepped off the underfloor heating manifold on some copper. So when required the builder should be able to just loosen up the screw slide the ply in and we should be fine so this is the manifold we're going to be using on this job um <clears throat> we'll start at the bottom here so this is the uh, actuator which almost replaces the two port which we was kind of talking about earlier so there isn't a two port for the underfloor heater near the boiler because this actually does that job 
Now from this point, this is where the water flows in. We've got almost like a TRV, which controls the flow temperature. So really on underfloor heating, you want it as low as possible. So it will allow it to think to go up to 60, but you would never run it that hot. So unlike a renewable energy um, manifold, we've actually got a pump because it's traditional. And along here, the flow will come in, be regulated by our flow meters and then go round through the underfloor heating pipe work, back up through the return. And then normally you would have actuators on here as well, controlling independent rooms or zones, but because we're only using uh, one room or one zone here, um, they're actually just got builder caps on the top. So four ports is a little bit overkill for what we're doing, but we'll probably only use two and then cap the rest. And I would, basically it means if they needed to, they could potentially have underfloor heating through here once the rest of the building work is done. Um, so Bailey's actually arrived and he has kindly marked out where the kitchen units are gonna go. So we've got an island here and we've got a bank of units running along this wall and then underneath the window here, um, we didn't fit that. <laughs> so um, what we're gonna do is basically just run the pipes up and down back and forth back to the manifold and uh, once that's done we can fill it up okay so the underfloor heating pipe work is now down um, the method we use is just a staple gun so the reason we use that is because it's actually quite a bit cheaper than running all the tracks or using that like perforated panels um, it makes no odds apart from the pipes look a little bit wavy when you put them down but no one's obviously ever going to see it because it's gonna be covered in screed. So as long as you've got your centers right to your design, so these are roughly 200 mil, then you won't have any issue. So we've had to go a little bit freestyle in places like this because we've got the island going here. The decoiler was no help at all because the coils we had were so small, it wasn't really helping spin it around. But anyway, that's all done. So moving on to the manifold. What we've done is we've used the uh, far two ports. Like I say, we're gonna save the other two just in case you have underfloor heating elsewhere in the property. Now, for any of you who don't know how this connects on, basically you have to deburr the pipe. So this pipe work here is 16 mil and you'll need an MLCP pipe deburrer, which looks something like that. Basically that just pushes in, will it focus? There you go, so that just pushes into the pipe and then it's just got like a blade or a bevel there and it just um, basically chamfers the pipe down and then you put one of these inserts inside. Um, they've got a black rubber O-ring on. So they just push down into the pipe and then you have your nut and your olive and that's pretty much it. Just goes on like that, pinch that up and that's it, job's done. So. We're just looking for some caps for this manifold to cap these two. If not, what we'll do is we'll run a short piece of pipe between the two and uh, just create a bypass so we can fill it up and test it. Okay, so I've temporarily capped those two ports that we're not using for now. Um, you can get ones that are supplied by the manifold, so I will get them swapped out. So, But we just put three quarter caps on there at the moment. Um, yeah, so Bailey has jumped upstairs and he is gonna top the boiler pressure up while I Fill it from down here, so should be able to just open these up. <laughs> and flood the place like that because I haven't shut the isolation valve at the bottom. Hey! Right, so I've shut this pool to fix valve now. So that is just gonna be a drain of point mainly for the builders if they do need to remove this pipe work to get the ply in. So anyway, let's go again. So what that's doing is that's just dumping the central heating pressure from the boiler and the central heating system into our underfloor heating. I don't know if you can hear that, but the AAB is going, which is what we want. So it's kind of bleeding through as we're filling it. So at the moment, I'm just opening up the flow. Now this actuator is actually open, you can tell because the blue ring is showing, which is why the water is going in. So if I just open up this return pipe, 
There we go, and you can just see now that the pressure gauge is starting to go up. Okay, so we've got the underfloor heating pipe work all full up now. We've just fed it straight off the boiler um, and used the keyless filling loop on them Worcesters. So you can, if you wanted to, um, pump the manifold up separately and you can go to a maximum of six bar, which some manufacturers recommend, but it's always worth pressure checking it at this stage. You never know if you've got a deformity in the pipe or you might have a split or a hole and they come to screed it and then you're gonna have problems once it's all tiled and decorated. So yeah, we're pretty much all done here. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video if you would like and subscribe we would really appreciate it and hopefully see you on the next one so bailey's absolutely adamant that this plumbing work makes the video so i wasn't going to show it but here we go so he's chopped in two t's for a towel row for some reason this wall's not getting plastered it's just getting painted and uh there you go lovely